Uh, so, um, let's just start with this. Uh, every time I boot up Drake of the 99 Dragons, this happens. It would appear that even a non-sentient chunk of mid-2000s plastic knows it should not be cooperating with this game. Drake of the 99 Dragons is, um, I believe it technically qualifies as a video game, but I'm gonna have to check my sources on that. Released in 2003 by Idol FX, a Swedish studio that coincidentally happens to make games with all the integrity of IKEA furniture. Aside from Drake, they've made all-time classics such as... Gast. And who could forget that seminal masterpiece, FBI Hostage Rescue. Drake was an attempt by the studio to launch a new media franchise of games, comics, and even an animated series, which explains the Bruce Tim rip-off art style. Yes, they had that much confidence in this, and no, I am not kidding. But what is... this? Well, sit yourself down and I'll take you on a carefully guided tour through the burning wreckage. Keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times, and please do not attempt to grab the controls. You needn't worry, as I am a professional practitioner of terrible games, and I promise not to let the hazardous gameplay get to you. Please enjoy the ride. After navigating this eerily soundless menu, we're immediately thrust into a cutscene. The reason there's no load time appears to be because these video files were apparently rendered in 240p at 10 frames per second, giving them a near non-existent load time. I only point this out so you guys don't think the stuttering and blurriness is my fault. Every time you see the video tear and hang, the blame rests solely on the developers. So this slack-jawed charmer here is our player character, Drake of the 99 Dragons. He introduces himself better than I could, so I'll just let him go. Those who know my name whisper it in fear. Most people I meet, I only meet once. I am Drake, the assassin. To me, life is all about death. Now, given his thousand-yard stare, large underbite, overly pale skin, and a droning, barely audible voice, I think the developers deserve some real credit for creating the first mentally handicapped video game protagonist. Drake of the 99 Dragons decides to do some target practice, giving us our first taste of... game... play... What the fuck is that? I know I made fun of how he looked in the cutscene, but now I'm just kind of concerned. The game is trying to look like a cel-shaded comic book or TV show, presumably to tie into all that merch they were gonna make. Well, most of the models look... presentable? The backgrounds and levels themselves aren't lacking any real detail at all. It makes the game look like an unfinished tech demo, and speaking of things that make this game look unfinished, the gameplay. Walking around works alright, and you can tell I'm really reaching for positives here. Every other action I attempt to perform has some kind of problem, though. You can jump and double jump, but the heightened momentum you gain from either seems to be random, or at the very least, inconsistent. Drake of the 99 Dragons likes to do this flippy shit every time you jump, and it ruins your mid-air control. The game is chock full of precise platforming segments, so you can imagine how wonderful this is. You may have noticed at this point my crazy noodle arms that clip into each other and faff about at impossible angles. This is the result of the most frustrating mechanic in the entire game about shooting things. The shooting is bad. For some reason, I can't even begin to fathom. You cannot aim in this game. There is no button to press, no option to adjust. The only way you can kill things is to shoot them. And the only way to shoot them is to wail on the triggers and pray the horrific auto-aim targets the enemy you want to shoot. In the rare event that this happens, it still won't matter because 60 to 70% of all your bullets miss even when you are locked on. This is the source of almost all of my deaths throughout this playthrough, being gunned down by opponents who I would have easily killed had I had control over my aim. The strange thing about this decision is that it might not even be intentional. If you wait at the title screen for a minute, you'll see this attract video for the game. If you look closely through the horrific blur of the FMV, you can see that in some of the clips a crosshair is clearly visible. What the fuck is that about? I guess that's enough complaining for now. Let's just finish this tutorial and move on. The temple is suddenly attacked by metal humanoids called Tang Cyborgs, robots with spirits of the deceased inside of them. It's not as interesting as it sounds. Strange thing about the cyborg, a machine, yet I sensed presence inside it. A soul? Oh, what was that? Intruders in the penthouse of the 99 Dragons clan? You must be out of this world to get past our guards. 
I must see to the Master. And the Soul Portal Artifact. Rumors say Tang is hunting for it. It was given to our clan over 3,000 years ago. We've guarded it since, and we're not going to lose it now. <laughs> wow, that, uh, that sure is some exposition. Really seamless blending of world building into dialogue. 8 out of 8, mate. When Drake gets to the artifact's resting place, he finds the MacGuffin stolen, and... Well... If there is unrest in the spirit world, Master will know. Master? M me This can't be! All dead! And I... The tattoo! Oh! No! That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Our protagonist didn't even make it past the tutorial without dying. It is explained to us that Drake is, for all intents and purposes, immortal, because he has the tattoo of the Undying Dragon on his chest. This sick ink allows him to reincarnate a seemingly infinite number of times with no consequence, save for the Quasimodo gargoyles busting your balls for a bit. No explanation is given for why every member of the Dragon Clan doesn't have this marking. You know, immortality feels like it'd be a pretty fucking useful ability for a bunch of assassins. Oh, and for future reference, Drake does not suffer memory loss when the dragon tattoo activates. This scene was only put here to be some kind of shocking surprise, even though it contradicts the rest of the game. Drake, of the 99 Dragons, is reincarnated to pursue the artifact thieves, and then... The strength of the stolen souls is changing me. Have I become... No, 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 but seriously. The next level involves chasing the thief through the streets of wherever this game takes place. It sounds easy, but I assure you, you'll have to be pretty quick and cunning to catch up with this master criminal. this fucking game. The next level is very vertically oriented, so it's probably a good time to talk about the wall running. You must understand, as an elite assassin, Drake of the 99 Dragons is well versed in hardcore parkour. His grace and style is matched only by his rugged good looks. As I explained, the jump is floaty and unwieldy, so of course adding the ability to walk along walls only improves this situation. Like everything else in the game, it's a luck-based crapshoot. Either you effortlessly jump on a wall, and then jump off, or you clumsily smack into any remotely vertical surface and proceed to get stuck, lose control of the camera, or fall off and drop like a fucking rock. It's... it's great, trust me. None of that matters though, because... and I'm not fucking with you. The level ends like this. The next few levels are like... A haze of circa 2000s edge and poorly aimed bullets. I couldn't think of a single remarkable thing to say about them. I can't show you some of the cutscenes though, because these things are the perfect mix of bad directing, bad modeling, bad voice acting, and horrific sound mixing. Tilling the courier here from the house of the dreaming clown was a lucky shot. Since he saved me some time, I'll spare his life. The owner wanted it was Puck! You lie. I killed him. I want the truth. Serpent Eye is well ahead of me. I must return to the Dreaming Clown at once. Ah! How many can there be? <laughs> Why won't you just die? This way you should be there in no time. Thugs, this is a one-way street. <laughs> oh, jeez. You know, these cutscenes almost make the game worth it. Almost. Drake, of the 99 Dragons, continues chasing after the Soul Portal artifact. This mission has some large open rooms that can only be cleared by use of the one mechanic I haven't discussed yet. The one mechanic that was in every action game for like 10 fucking years after The Matrix came out. Bullet time. 
Why is stopping time an ability granted by a dragon tattoo that has only been explained to give immortality? Well, if you give me about five seconds... And that was my well thought out and absolutely factual essay on how to stop time. Thanks for listening. Seriously though, this time stop thing has just as many issues as everything else. Beginning with the fact that unlike, say, Max Payne, where the time slowing augments your gameplay as an optional assistant, the time slowing in Drake of the 99 Dragons is a required mechanic for most of the encounters in the game. Why is this? Well, despite the fact that I can't hit an enemy two inches in front of my face, enemies have near flawless pinpoint accuracy from any range. If you enter a room with more than two goons in it, you'll be instantly shredded, no questions asked. The only way to avoid this is to use up your time stop gauge, represented by this green circle down here. This, like your health, can only be replenished through the souls of defeated enemies. Now, get this. To activate it, you either have to hold down B or the left stick. And when I say hold it, I mean hold it. If you let go, the ability will stop, meaning you have the choice between holding down the left stick while you move around, which is not only awkward, but will quickly wear down the mechanics inside of your controller, or occupy your right thumb to hold down the B button in a game where you're jumping and spinning the camera constantly, actions that require the use of your right thumb. For the sake of thoroughness, I should also mention the time freeze as well, even though it's useless crap. If you double tap the time slow button, you lose a chunk of your meter and perform a time freeze. This is a serious contender for the most pointless mechanic in any video game ever. Look, not just in games, but in any other media with time abilities, the user of the ability is able to move about the stopped time. Drake of the 99 Dragons dispenses with this idea and decides instead that it would be much more useful to have you freeze along with the enemies. Yeah, thanks for the fucking help, assholes. Great mechanic. The only purpose this power serves is to accidentally consume a large portion of your soul gauge when you're just trying to do the normal time slow. Back at the plot, Drake of the 99 Dragons chases the thief out into the streets again and ends up fighting against a gang of bikers. I only mention this level specifically so I can show you something. See all the shiny barrels everywhere? The game tells me that I should use their explosive nature to help clear out enemies. There's just a little problem with that. Um, I can't aim, remember? After an incredibly boring boss fight against some fat fuck with a chain, Drake of the 99 Dragons just keeps on wandering around town and search for the artifact till he comes across, and I must stress again that I'm not kidding, a group of cultists who are going to sacrifice an albino whale to contact the spirit world. They're doing this so the big bad guy, Tang, can place souls into his mass-produced cyborgs and sell them to consumers as slave bots. If this seems stupid and convoluted... After killing all the longshoremen at the fishing plant, this shit happens. Now, when I first saw this, I was thinking, Oh, I got tranked. Time for a prison level. But no. Fucker's dead. Again. The gargoyle statue things decide to put Drake of the 99 Dragons back in his dead body from the beginning of the game. And he arrives just in time to see them taking his master's corpse away. So the level starts in... Wait, this isn't... Oh. Okay, uh, I think I know what happened here. Judging from this strange incubator thing that isn't seen anywhere else in the game, I'm guessing the original plan was for Drake of the 99 Dragons to have his lifeless body stored here, which would explain why we spawn in a small room that is certainly not the room from the cutscene. They must have just changed something at the last second and screwed it up. It's just my guess, of course. This level is just the first level again. So I have nothing to say about it other than this particular group of Swedes are awful fucking lazy. The first, second, and third levels use the same map, as does this level, and another level that's in a completely different building that I didn't talk about. The only thing they added was this elevator section, which blows dick because you're being bombarded by rockets, and Mr. Flippy shit over here takes more fall damage than 80's Mario. After that annoyance, Drake of the 99 Dragons has to defeat a cyborg made from the body of his dead master in an intense strategic fight that will take great advantage of everything you've learned up to this point. In order to stop Tang and get back his master's soul, Drake of the 99 Dragons has to sneak into his hideout through the subway. You might be thinking this means we get some kind of stealth mission, and you'd be like... 20% correct? 
you can shoot and alert all the guards you want and the number of alarms doesn't increase. The number only goes up when you trip these infrared beams. This is obviously more lazy corner cutting on the developer's part, but I would be lying to you if I said I wanted to play an actual sneaking level with these fucking controls. After going through an almost comically large ventilation system, we arrive at yet another boss, and there's so many problems with this one, I don't know what to do except show you. But, the fun is over now. The next level is going to be the final stop on our tour, as I regret to inform you I was unable to progress any further. For reference, this is how the level begins. I think you can see where this is heading. So, this building is huge, easily three or four times larger than any level so far. That's already bad, but navigating to the end isn't all there is to it. You have to find six blue soul containers and destroy them. And these containers are always off the normal path of progression in tiny side rooms filled with enemies who will shoot you the second you open the door. All of this is capped off by the last huge mistake this game makes, one that I have been waiting until now to mention. This game has no checkpoints. None. Nada. Nothing. If you die, you go back to the start of the mission every time. This was a pain in the ass up until this point, but this level is what made me realize what a terrible design choice this really truly was. Most levels last around two to four minutes, so it isn't too bad, but like I said, this level is huge. Enemies kill you very quickly, and with the terrible controls, it's easy to fall off of something or just get stuck for a moment and die. Then it's back to this again. I spent an hour or two trying to beat this level before just giving up, and I'm not really ashamed to admit it. Call me lazy if you want, I, I really don't care at this point. I devoted more than enough time to this disaster. If the developers aren't going to take the time to balance and bug test their game, why should I willingly frustrate myself to complete it? Let's be honest with ourselves. What would I have really proven if I completed the entire thing? For reference, I'm pretty close to the end, only about 4 levels left out of 25 or so. Do any of you really believe the game improves in any way for these last couple stages? Do you think there's some kind of miraculous shift that suddenly makes the game playable and would shift my opinion away from this game blows dragon cock? Do you think it's anything other than terrible shooting, terrible platforming, and terrible cutscenes? No. No, of course not. How the hell did they think this was going to be a huge hit? A massive multimedia franchise that would rock the world based on this? Are you serious here? I'm going to be honest. I was wary about considering this game one of the worst of all time. But after that last level, I have no qualms about, at the very least, calling this the worst game on Xbox. It's, it's not even a contest for me, really. The game's buggy, unfinished, short ugly, terrible to control. It's got bad game written all over it. I don't even really know what else to say at this point. So I guess I won't say anything else. Oh, Drake of the 99 Dragons. We hardly knew ye. The ideas in this game aren't terrible. It's just literally everything else is. Oh well, at least it's a fun little footnote in gaming history and a friendly reminder to never count your chickens before they hatch. Or 
your dragons, I guess. 